Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And somebody sent me this photograph of a pillow and they want to know how they could reduplicate this. And they said they were having trouble with the hearts. I didn't use hearts. You could use a heart now that I think about it, but I think it's going to be a lot easier to use ovals. But let's just look at a heart first. Go to common shapes or basic shapes. And here's the key with using a heart. Just draw out a heart. Don't have to do anything special. Go to object and convert it to a curve. And then when you do that, you get nodes and you can bring this in. We could actually delete those two nodes, delete those two nodes, and we kind of get that shape. I'm actually going to spread it out a little bit. It's I, I was thinking it was more vines of a tree than uh, a heart. That's probably pretty good. We need to reduce it in size. And these are going downhill, so I need to mirror it. Now it's not perfect. There are five of these. So I'm going to control D and make a duplicate of that guy, move it down. And then I'm going to reduce this guy by quite a bit. I'm going to hit uh, C to put them in the center. It doesn't really matter. I don't think we're going to go to effects and blend. We only need five. We've already got two. So we're going to blend. That's pretty cool. I think it's a little bit big and they're not really spread out enough, but that'll work. Now I drew a circle. I'm going to put it in the center of the page. It's there. And you, you could have maybe blended this to path, but by the time you get it all worked out, so we need to group it all or select it all, go to group, break, blend apart, select it all, go up to object and ungroup it. Then just start putting these on your graphic. Let's go ahead and just get them all close so we can use the zoom tool and zoom in here. Now, we want that thing right on that edge. So we're going to grab it twice and move our rotation to that edge and just move this over till it's on that edge. Same thing on this one. We're going to grab that edge, double click, rotate it till it's on that edge. The center edge versus the outside edge is what I'm talking about. And we need to move this over just a little bit. I don't think it has to be perfect. And that one actually worked out. Then you have to rotate it. That one we can move a little bit. You want to, and see, I, that time I didn't move the, the rotation of the top edge. And you could see what happened. So let's double, double click on it now. Move that center rotation mark to there. And move one of the handles till it gets on the line. One more. Whoop. And this is the kind of the main reason I like drawing at the center of the page, and you'll see in just a second. We'll move this over a guy a little bit, center rotation to there, and move that. Now in the drawing, it had two other features that are kind of like elongated circles. So we're just going to take an elongated circle. And that's too big, but we'll we'll change it. Just make it smaller and actually rotate it with our edge. Control D and make a duplicate and put another one. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we need to group this together. Control G. Now there's a couple ways to do this, and this is why I draw on the center of the page. I'm going to bring in some indexing lines. I'm going to hit P and put them on the, in the center of the page. I'm going to control D and make a duplicate of that drawing. I'm going to double click on it and move my rotation to the center. Doesn't look like it is, but when you do it again, it is. I'm going to rotate this guy 45 degrees. It's not quite perfect. These need to be either moved down or we need to stretch our original drawing by just a little bit. So let's back up here. You want to make sure you don't have a duplicate and we take it away. Now we can stretch it or we can stretch the circle because we're going to scale it to object anyway in a minute. So I'm going to 
move this guy over to like right here. Then I'm going to move my center rotation at that point. And you really need to probably move all the points over, you know, ungroup it. But for the video, I'm not going to take that time. Now let's control D and make a duplicate. Double click on it and move the rotation to the center. Make sure it's there. Rotate it now. See, we've already we're we've already got 2.7, so we're gonna add 45 degrees. Now just kind of look at it. These two circles are a little bit closer to the front end than they are the back end, but it doesn't really matter. You could correct that before you start. Control D, add 45 degrees. I'm hitting the plus side and plus 45. And then you can control D all the way around. That looks pretty good. Now what we can do, and we maybe should have just filled him in first. But see, we're a little bit off, but that can be corrected. So now what we need to do is select everything and put in a fill. Whoop, that won't work. Can't select everything. Oh, where was I at? Here we go. The man even called it help again. Let's take away our circle for a second. And let's fill everything in with black. And then I'm going to left, right click, no fill. Now I'm going to take this circle and move it back. But it's a little bit thicker, so I need to do something other than a hairline. And I'm going to put a half a point. Doesn't look right. Let's go a full point and scale it with object. Very important in this case. Because I know the pillow is going to be bigger than two inches. And then that way, when we scale this guy, that middle line is still the same. Now, the other part right here, and that's why I decided to go ahead and do this video, because all these tools are inside Corel. Go to your basic shapes or common shapes and grab this banner right here and just draw you a banner. Now I'm going to hit P, put it in the center of the page. Let me move this stuff out of the way. And I'm going to select all that and group it. Control G and hit P, put it in the center of the page. Our banner looks pretty good. We need to change this, the thickness of the banner line. It's a hairline because I draw everything in hairline. So let's make it that one point and scale with object. Because we're still only, you know, four inches big on a pillow. Now I'm going to take away my indexing line so they won't interfere. And I'm going to type out that name. I'm actually going to grab that name from the previous video or previous when I practiced. I'm going to hit P, put it in the center of the page. But you see we're not in the center of the... So you could change your nudge distance to something lower, 0 0.01, and nudge, nudge that name up. I'm having trouble grabbing the name. Because you want it in the center. Then just, let's just grab that G. We'll make it quite a bit bigger. And I'm thinking the guy is going to print this on a pillow or maybe even engrave it. Now, the only other, and I would make this line a little bit thicker than we have it, make it two points. It's still scale with object. And I would probably actually move the whole thing down a little bit like it is in the pillow. Now, the only other thing we need to do is get this curly cube, if that's what he's trying to do. It's not a very good picture, and you could get some off the internet, and I even have some pages of squiggles, but we're going to use this one. I'm going to control D and make a duplicate of that. With this selected, go and get your crop tool and crop out this curly cube. By selecting it, nothing else on the page got taken away. If you didn't select it and you cropped it out, you would have you would crop away everything that was on the page. Now this is a terrible, terrible, but we're gonna go it well, let's do one more thing. We're gonna resample it 
make it 300 dots per inch. That's going to sharpen it up a little bit. Then we're just going to go to outline traits and clip art. We're not going to convert it to a bitmap or anything. That's terrible. Um, you know what? Uh, let's go ahead and let's convert it to a grayscale and then trace it. Man, the first time I traced it this morning or a while ago, it was perfect. I'm going to make it where I don't even do anything to it. I didn't even resize it now or re. There we go. That's what I did. Sometimes resampling might not help you. Now we've got this broken apart, ungrouped. Well, we're going to ungroup it, go to object, ungroup, and then you can get rid of this garbage that was in the picture that you didn't need. No, there's some like blonde spots or non dark gray spots. Now, how do you get rid of this bar? Left click. No fill, right click, outline. Take a two point line and just go from that node to that node. Get your smart fill tool and fill this in. Now you got that shape. Now this is terrible. I would actually look for something better. This could be cleaned up quite good. Um, and the flatness of the bottom doesn't matter because we're going to put it on something flat, I would get your smoothing tool, and just kind of smooth it out a little bit, especially this, this part right here. That doesn't look half bad. Anyway, we'll go with it for this video. Grab the pick tool, make it quite a bit bigger, turn it black and left click, right click and have no feel. We're almost finished. This is kind of the key. Control D and make a duplicate and then mirror that guy. Start moving and then hold down the control button. It'll stay on that plane. And you could eyeball or, or mirror it. And then all you do is just need to pick a font um, that's something fancy. And this is a kind of a good thing. Hit P, put it in the center of the page and then just nudge it down. That way that font is in the center of the page or center of your circle as everything else is. I'm guessing he's a printer. You would need all your blacks to be the same. And you can see that that line right there is grayer than the, the other. So just make sure everything's the same color. And I'm sure if he's a, whoop, if he's a printer, he'll know that. Anyway, I hope that helped a little bit, and thank you for watching.